everyone. Welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. The wait is almost over, guys, because Sex Education is coming back to Netflix in 2020. And season two will continue to follow late bloomer and resident sex therapist Otis Milburn as he deals with the excitement and often awkward reality of sex in high school. Acer Butterfield and Shuti Gatwa join us today to talk about the show. But first, let's look at the trailer. I've noticed you're pretending to masturbate, and I was wondering if you wanted to talk about it. I wish my mom was a sex guru. So, why don't you start by telling me your earliest memory of your scrotum? Trust me, you don't. You no, know I love you so bad. This is a new frontier, my sexually repressed friend. Our chance to finally move up the social food chain. I love you so bad. I'm worried about you, man. Everybody's either thinking about shagging, about to shag, or actually shagging. Students at the school need your help and we need their money. I'll deal with the business and things. And you can do the therapy. Therapy? Yeah, sex therapy. Like your mum. Ah, sex therapist. This could be awesome. Well, you could be popular. I might have a mild to moderate crush on me. I'm addicted to wanking. My pubes are out of control. I wish I could be a normal kid with a normal dad, with a normal dick. <laughs> for the best two years of our lives. Let me give you some condoms. Oh, thanks, Mum. Stay out of my life. What kind of man do you want to be? What kind of man do you want me to be, Dad? Money! You can't choose who you're attracted to. Engineer a relationship. I don't believe in love. You are who you are. Don't let anyone take that away from you. I still think it's a way to teenage boys a sex therapist. Put your hands together for Asa Butterfield and Shuti Gatwa. Thank you. You guys, you know, we always have people here in the audience, but this is a full house. And I think that's a testament to your performances, but also how good the show is, right? I mean, people love this show. Everybody I've ever talked to, they're like, have you seen Sex Education? And so I was, I didn't know when it was coming back, so I was excited to see you guys on the schedule and to know that it's coming back in 2020. How do you guys feel about season two? Is that excitement the same for you? Yeah, definitely. I'm so excited, very, very excited. A lot of love has went into this season, a lot of fun. It's, it's very, it's got a lot of emotional weight as well. And so I'm just very, we've delved a lot deeper into all of the characters' lives and storylines. And we learn about who the characters are a lot more this season. And so I'm very excited for the world to see that. Yeah, I think that's something that I love most about this show is that the characters really are super fleshed out. Their arcs are really, you can tell really thought out from beginning to end. So let's actually talk about that. Otis, from the beginning of season one to season two, we saw a lot of growth and change, right? Um, so what do we see him continue to sort of struggle with or, you know, realize in season two? Um, well, I mean, yeah, it's 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 a whole it's a whole new uh, area he's discovering. He's got a girlfriend now, yeah. so he's uh, he's 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 learning about that. And um, as we saw at the end of season one, he's finally connected with himself. Sexually, he finally mm -hmm. masturbated, guys. Okay, so, uh, Yay! so <laughs> as you can imagine, there's a whole lot of that going on, um, which keeps him very busy. Um, much, much to Eric's delight. <laughs> <laughs> Eric uh, is very proud. He's very proud of his. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, what about Eric? Again, I don't think we've seen a character really kind of grow as much, and he went through so much in first season. Um, so, what do we see him sort of blossom into in, in second season? Um, yeah, he he goes through a lot in the first season and went through a lot. And I feel like this year we just see Eric return just a lot more comfortable within himself um, and a lot more like embracing, abrasive, embracing <laughs> of, a, of who he is, but not in any kind of like overt way. He's just quite comfortable and settled within himself. If they both got a new confidence this year. There's, yeah. They're, 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 quite, they're almost popular boys now. Which yeah. is a change from the first season. Yeah, they, things got, have changed. They got some attention, uh -huh. some, 
Is it a love triangle is going on? Uh-huh. It's, uh, it's very juicy. <laughs> very juicy. I'm interested uh, about how much of uh, you, what you bring to these characters versus what is written. Like, what kind of conversations happen with the showrunner? Like, how much of it is on script, and then how much do they give you liberty to sort of either add details or influence? Um, I think I, I think I brought a lot of myself into Otis. Um, in his sort of, there was there was sort of the. The stuff like what was in his room, the kind of posters he had, and the kind of games he was interested in, and they said, oh, yeah. and I was like, no, 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 he'll, he'll play these games, and and, and so I, I brought a lot of that from myself, and um, and sort of Otis's awkwardness. I quite enjoy playing awkward characters. It, kind of, it feels quite familiar. I wonder why. And um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, shut up. So you mentioned the so, games and stuff. Point out because we do have some real fans in the audience. So what are maybe some of those things in his room that well, you he, thought he would he would listen to this or play with this? He's a big Nintendo fan, as as I am, um, and he plays a lot of Mario Kart as we play in the first season, a lot of Smash, Super Smash Brothers, um, and he, he's a sort of he's got like retro memorabilia in his room, robots, a lot of Japanese kind of manga, and so there's a lot of that. It's quite, not quite niche, but if you're nerdy about that stuff, you know a lot about it. And if you don't, it's like can be completely alien. And so he he, he likes his niche hobbies and quirks and and geek geekisms. Yeah, he's very specific. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and what about you? What did you sort of help breathe into Eric? Um. Well, the writing was so good that I feel like you just kind of say the lines, and it's. And it's good. Like the, the writing was amazing, um, but I feel like yeah, I I'm Rwandan. I come from an African background, and so certain like just sounds and stuff like that, I was able to kind of bring to the table. And like I grew up in church as well, and so I know that whole rigmarole. Um, but yeah, I feel like we the the writers and the direct uh, director Ben Taylor have always been quite open and collaborative with us, and I feel very much kind of like involved us in the process of it. Ben allowed, loves us like ad-libbing and adding little bits in here and there. I've got, an, I've got a naughty in style because I can be quite naughty on set in terms of just like adding <laughs> adding lines and just like making sounds. Careful, she's and, yeah, no, <laughs> not naughty. Like, just like, you know, ad-libbing and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and Ben is very like embracive of that. And so... Yeah, and the writers as well very much like reached out to me a couple of times to like make sure things were accurate about like the church life and mm. African households, and um, they but wanted to get that really right and specific. And I feel like they brought a lot of that into the second season as well, like yeah. learning from the first season, seeing what we did with the characters, yeah. and then bringing those little quirks, those little sounds, those yeah. little uh, sayings which we which we came up with, which weren't necessarily written, but now they've kind of have become part of the character. Yeah. Which is, which is nice. They've we, like we, studied us a bit. I feel yeah. like the writers have like just watched us and be like, oh, he's like this. Okay, let me write something in frame like this. Yeah. So it's nice. So you guys both really identify in, at some point or on some level with the characters you're playing then, it seems like. Yeah. Yeah. You know these guys. Yeah. Which is why I feel like their friendship works so well. One, because you guys, I think, understand these guys. I can tell that your chemistry as friends in real life is there. Um, I think... Eric and Otis have to be some of the best, best friends on TV right now. Would you guys agree? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We didn't know each other before this. So we came in. We had we met on like one of the rehearsal days, which there were only a couple of before we were in Wales, hey. before we were filming. There we go. There's, <laughs> there we are on our, on our, on our adventure. Otis is fully kitted out, as you can see. Well prepared, <laughs> always. Um, Eric and Otis, I mean, they're quite different. Like they they've got different energies, um, they, and, and, but I think that works. I think that's why they're friends. I think that's why our chemistry works. That's why they become this sort of great dynamic duo. Um, it's because they kind of co- they they complement each other and they bring other sides of each other mm. out of them, and, and 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 they just love each other so much. And you can kind of see they like they mean the world <laughs> to each other. Yeah. You see that in the show. Yeah. Um, and I think we were just we were just quite lucky that me and Shooty connected. Yeah. And, and and just got this nice rhythm between us, this yeah. banter, yeah. and uh, <laughs> yeah, we're lucky. Yeah. We're lucky because we only met like two days before we started filming, so we hadn't met at all before. So thank God we got on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank God we got on. But it's, uh, that, that would not. I mean, we're not smiling there, but yeah. Yeah. it'd be even less. But smiles. they're happy on the inside. Yeah. They're happy on the inside. Yeah. yeah, it's just it's yeah, it's really it's it's obviously it's a real pleasure to work with Asa as well, and I feel like um. I don't know. It's just it's nice to see like 
this dynamic as well. Like you've got this like straight white awkward kid, yeah. this like loud mouth gay black kids, yeah. and they're like so different, but like they're just boys hanging out. Yeah. Like yeah, that's and I love seeing that. And there's so many. I think the first time you are the first time I talked to you about this show last year, you said what drew you to it were the relationships, and there are just so many different relationships that I think people can find a connection to, and your friendship is one of them. Uh, another one, Eric, your your character, Eric, uh, his relationship with Adam is one that I think a lot of people um, are concerned about. <laughs> yeah, no, I can imagine. So, so take me through the feedback you had in season one, because again, you're playing a young black gay teenager who's in this confusing dynamic with somebody who's been a bit of a bully mm. and has been homophobic, but then there's uh, an attraction. Mm. So what kind of feedback have you had f for that dynamic? Oh, feedback. Oh. First, first feedback. Um, people stand, like stand hard. <laughs> They're like the Eric and Adam. Really? Yeah, uh, like love storyline. And there was a lot of like, <laughs> there was a lot of like pictures and like romantic music to like the bit where Adam is like grabbing <laughs> Eric's face. I'm like, that's, don't romanticize that. Like that's, don't put up with, if someone grabs your face, it's not romantic. Just so you know, yeah? <laughs> Just so you know. So there was a lot, there's a lot of that. I think people really want to see them together. And I feel like that's great and a real testament of Connor Swindells, who plays, um, who plays Adam. Um, because he just added so much truth to Adam and so much like light and darkness to him in terms of he's not just like a bad guy. You know what I mean? Like you, we see Adam throughout the whole series having this really difficult relationship with his dad and how that affects his uh, identity and his sense of masculinity. And not that you can understand why he is like a bully to Eric, but in that moment when they meet in the music room, when they meet in the music room, um, <laughs> when they, <laughs> they um, like he's, they're just two, it's a very human moment. Like they're two young boys who have been like searching for intimacy in their lives. They've both, they're both lacking affection and intimacy. And I feel like they find each other in that moment. And so it's quite a human moment. Does it feel really important to you to be playing a character like Eric right now? It feels really important yeah. to me. It feels really important to me because I feel like, you know, there's so many people that have been like silenced for so long and marginalized for so long. And I feel like our, like conversations regarding race, regarding gender, regarding all these things have progressed so much in the past couple of years. Like even the past five years, they've progressed so much. And it's incredible to see and I feel like, I feel so honored that I get to play Eric and, and represent different people <laughs> from different intersections. Like it's very, it's very important that we take space and we make noise. Yeah. For anyone that's feel, felt marginalized, like this is our moment. So I feel very honored that I get to be a part of this moment that's happening. Yeah. It's a testament to the show because in a lot of other scripts, he might just be a sidekick. But as we've discussed, he has this very rich life that we get to explore and see. And he has this very deep arc, you know, that is really important, I think, to a lot of the viewers. And again, that's just really refreshing, I think, as a viewer. Yeah. Um, another relationship that people are really into is Otis and Maeve. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. kind of like a will they, won't they? And I keep thinking, should they, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, should they? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, what yeah. do you think? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, I mean... You're right. It is a is it will they won't they should they shan't they will they won't they um, I don't we don't know no one knows, knows. I'm, I'm I'm pestering the writers like what <laughs> what actually happens but you're right it's um I mean the stage Otis is in his life Maeve and Otis come from very different backgrounds they they are very they're they they they're, they're mature in some ways but also immature in others um, and I feel like they really get each other they possibly get each other better than anyone else besides maybe Eric, mm. of course. Yeah, of course. Um, obviously. <laughs> and, um, but I don't, know if I don't know if they're right at this stage, romantically. I mean, Osa is very uh, inexperienced and, and, and kind of and, um, new to this whole world, whereas Maeve is, is her own woman and she's confident and she's driven and she, she ain't gonna sort of hang about for anyone. Mm. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what happens in season two. And, uh, that was really vague, and uh, thank was, you for no spoilers, uh, I guess. That's all right. 
Yeah. Oh, because I feel like you within do an know? Inch of his life. <laughs> Did you guys already wrap season two? Or are you still? Shoot? No, we we wrapped. Oh, we so wrapped you, it you a know. couple months ago. We it was know. a really good. Uh, Netflix Thank would you. be very happy with that answer. Uh, yeah, that's all right. Netflix, I got you. <laughs> My opinion is that they should. I really like Ola for him. I really, I think that's like she's nice. She is nice. Good, yeah. right? Okay, anyway. Um, we also have to talk about Gillian Anderson because she oh, yeah. is an icon. Yeah. Um, Auntie Gillian, Auntie as, as Jill. <laughs> Is that what you call her? As I, lo I love Gillian Anderson. I love her. Um, and she's just, she is an icon. Right? She is an icon. Like, I, th I fully, fully, I'm happy to say that. Um, she's, she's working with her is great. I feel like she's been very nice to all of us and kind of taken us under her wing and... Um, she's 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 very she doesn't take her, she's talented but she doesn't take herself seriously too yeah. seriously she's like able to have fun and she's funny she's really she really made me giggle on set yeah. and we have a really we made it had this found this really nice natural relationship between this mother and son um, and she's uh, yeah I, I really enjoy working with Julian yeah. she's a good hoop. Yeah. You mentioned her sense of humor, and I would imagine everybody on set sort of has to have a sense of humor given the subject matter. So can you think about a day on set that was particularly fun or funny or outrageous? Because, like, your character specifically has to do a lot of outrageous things. Me, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is there a day on set that is memorable for you guys? Do you, the whole... Do you know what? That question is actually quite tricky to answer because it's like the whole... Shooting the whole season, every day is like... What is gonna, gonna happen gonna today? Us, yeah. like, what is gonna happen yeah. today? Yeah. And every day is just fun and like all the crew, all the cast, everyone really gets on. Like we are like a little as cheesy as it is, like it is a family, like it is a little family. And so every day is very fun. Um But like what is it like when you have to, you know, give a banana fellatio? That's what I'm talking about. Like yeah, days right, like right, right. that. Uh -huh. That was yeah. actually like week one, season one, week one of shooting. They were like, give Shooty the banana. Yeah. And we're all there like, yeah. It? Yeah. <laughs> and you have to have, yeah, you have to have a thick skin on this show. You have to very quickly kind of, not necessarily have a thick skin, but just be prepared. We all knew signing up to this, it's called sex education. Like there's gonna be something, you're gonna put yourself out there. Um, but we all became very close very quickly and it just, it that didn't become a thing. It was like, you know what, it's fine. There's no yeah. judgment. We're all here to make the show. We know what it's about. Both this goes for the cast and the crew. We were all like super supportive of each other, and so when Shooty came to do his his, his banana fellatio, we were support, all like man. urging him on, yeah. like, chanting, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were, yeah, hooting, yeah, yeah, mascots, yeah. like it was. It was yeah. I was his hype man. <laughs> I was there. I wasn't. On, I wasn't on camera, but I was in the back. Like, yeah, 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 I felt the love. I felt the love from off camera. I felt it. So much support, and again, it, the show's called Sex Education, so scenes like that are important. I think. Right? Maybe for some people who don't know. <laughs> hey man, you got an education for I didn't it. quite know how I was going to finish that <laughs> sentence. I was just talking. I was like, where am I going? I don't really know. Uh, so, so you guys have wrapped this, and I just want to like take the next couple of minutes to talk about what else is going on for you guys right now. How's life in general? Life is great. I just got some kittens. You, I saw them on your Instagram. Kids, which are like everything to me at the moment. Um, what are their names? Uh, there's a boy and a girl, brother and sister, uh, Atlas and Lyra are their names. And they're the sweetest things in my life. Yeah. And I miss them. They um, look like Asa. Like they have, the <laughs> same, they have the same eyes as Asa. They have your eyes. Yeah, they did. They, they see, did. See when the kittens, they had blue eyes when they're younger, but now their eyes have gotten so golden. No, no. really? Yeah. So yeah. what has been the most interesting thing about being a cat dad? <laughs> what have you learned? Um, uh, cats poo a lot. Cats poo a lot. So when I had cats at home, they would go out into the garden. Well, I don't have a garden in my flat. I just have a little box. Um, so they poo a lot, uh, and they scratch everything, which I kind of knew they would. I got a scratching post, but they scratch everything aside <laughs> the scratching post. Uh, oh, man, I just felt like such a cat person. <laughs> uh, and, um, yeah, they're just great. They're full of energy. They sleep a lot. They play... Um, that's about it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I've not met them yet. I still need to meet them. You've not? I know. Bad when are you getting your puppy? Because we need to introduce You're getting them. A we need puppy? to make this happen. I want to get a puppy, yeah. Um, I want to get a staffy. And uh, I think, like, February, I'm going to get a puppy. How do you guys have time to raise animals? Well, cat, <laughs> cats are sort of easier. Uh, 
I can imagine. I, do, I would not have the time to, to look after a dog. I'm not sure oh. you have the time, Shuti. I think you haven't thought this through properly. Oh, it's a let me, man. Oh. No, but look, like, Mi- Mimi, the, who plays... Um, Mimi true? Keen, who plays Ruby, the mm. queen bee, um, she, she has, like, like a whole... Pets. She's got, like, 15. She's got, like, birds, dogs, cats, turtles. I've, and she's got, like... a. <laughs> She's got turtles as well. Uh, yeah. She's got like a dog breeding business as well. Like she breeds dogs like as a business as well. So I feel like if she can, I can do it as well. Yeah. I'm going to do it. Um, I believe, believe in you. you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Although I just, you. I looked at your Instagram. You just seem real busy. You've been all over the place. Like it seems like you, life you, is Then good. you get the dog to be, you know, you can, what's it called? Like a travel companion. Then you take yeah. it everywhere. An emotional, An emotional support, support dog. dog. Uh, okay. You get a little vest and then you can take them everywhere. Yeah. And nobody yeah. can say anything about it. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Okay. Next time we're here, there's going to gonna be a puppy. A little puppy here. <laughs> yeah. A vest on. Staffy. I also, I also recently saw that you saw you met Billy Porter. Yes. Can we just talk about that? Because yes. that's somebody that I really love and yeah. want to meet. Yeah. Uh, just any fun stories? Like, he, uh, he, what an amazing guy. What an amazing guy who was so warm, so lovely. It, oh, I will, I, will, I will never forget that day. Like, it was just so amazing. He knew who I was. Yeah. I, like, I was like, wow. Like, he knew who I was and he just was so lovely. And like, he had watched the show and was a fan of the show. And yeah, like he's, he's a really great guy and he's so talented. And it's just the, the tapestry of like different stories that we're telling, where like the world is telling at the moment is amazing. And, I, and, and he is such a pioneer in that and, and just iconic. And so it was lovely to meet him and share that moment with him. It was, it was lovely. Have you met any other celebrities who told you they watched the show? And is that like an, an interesting thing? Um, no, we have. I think yeah. like, I, it, was, it was after we, after it came out, everyone, it felt like everyone had seen everyone, it. Like on the yeah. street, my friends at home. Um, and we were, when it came out, we were out, doing press, we were sort of doing this in January this yeah. year. And uh, and we got back a couple of days after it came out. Mm. And it was like this whole thing had happened whilst we'd been away and then and, and, and everyone kind of had seen it and yeah. it was cool. Yeah. It was really cool. Cause you never, you never really know with this kind of thing. You're like, yeah. is it going to be a hit? Are people going to enjoy it? Yeah. Um, and yeah, people and people are, yeah. which is really cool. Well, this person does. So uh, we do have a couple of questions before we get out of here. The first one comes from Twitter. Philip Louis asks, who breaks character the most on set? And is there a group chat with the cast? Yeah, there's, there's, multi- a, there's, a there's few group chats. multiple group chats. <laughs> group chats. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, <laughs> who, who breaks character? We got asked this the most and we, th- we, we didn't really want to call anyone out. Okay. I think... Who? Ben Taylor, the director. Ben Taylor, uh, the director. Even though he's not a character, he's, he's the one who... Uh, when we're doing a scene, if I'm going to hear anyone laugh, it's Ben Taylor, the director. In the other room, I hear him giggling behind the monitor, and we're trying to like hold it together. Yeah. I think we're pretty good. We're actually we're pretty good, yeah. Pretty I feel considering like the fight. things we have to do in this show, mm. like when Shooty's got a banana in his mouth, or I'm there going at it, like... We're, you professional. Got, we're professional. We're professional. professional. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta be. It's a craft, and it's you guys are committed. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. uh, where's our first audience question? Right here. Hey. Hi. Hello. So, um, I had a question about like how your own teenage experiences impacted like how you created these personalities for these super unique characters and like portrayed that while you were on set. Ooh, good question. Thank you. Um, I feel like you you bring elements of yourself to every role that you play as an actor um because that's all you can really you can only be you um and it's just about kind of like seeing the world like understanding and learning the world of the script and then trying to be you within that i guess uh i feel like i i definitely uh resonated with eric's sense of kind of you know i grew up in scotland and so there's not many scottish boys that look like me and so like i definitely understood what it felt like to be kind of isolated um yeah i've got uh, african parents i grew up in church as well like there was a few things that i was able to kind of bring to the table um but yeah you always kind of bring a bit of yourself to each character you play yeah i think um something that i think we really felt on set just being in like a school environment around around people your own age kind of brings you back to that 
slightly childish naivety when you're in school and nothing really, there's, the stakes aren't too high. And so I think we all kind of felt that. Mm. And you all kind of were reminded of those nerves, like when you when you talk to a girl you like or when you you realise you haven't, uh, written, written the assignment or, or, or you're late for school and it's that kind of when you're that age those are like the biggest mm -hmm. things in the world that's all that that's all that matters and and to be reminded of that is quite cool I want to point out you you are Scottish your accent seems yeah. like a little it less comes, it comes Scottish out Scottish than I thought it was going to be yeah so no. where are the where are the influences from in give, your give, give them a glass of iron brew and <laughs> Yeah. It'll come straight back out. Um, yeah, no, I, th I don't know. It's, I think being an actor has kind of neutralised it a little bit. Um, and you lived in London a while. I've lived in it's London very a English. while. Yeah. It's quite, yeah, it's quite Londonish. <laughs> um, I'm definitely like a Scotsman at heart, though. Very much so. Yeah. I don't doubt it for a second, by the way. I just had to ask. Right here. Hi, Courtney. Hi. Hi. Um, I know that um, Boy in the Straight Pajamas was one of your first major films and you were so young when you did it and I wondered how being in a film that was so important and so impactful at such a young age kind of influenced you going forward as an actor and how it affected you as a person or did they were you kind of sheltered from it because you were so young um I mean I don't think it really influenced me as an actor I was I mean I was yeah I was 10 years old and I didn't really, at that age, I didn't really know what acting was. I mean, I, I didn't have a process. I did, you, when, you, when you're that age, I find you just kind of are there in the moment and you're so sort of young and and, uh, and affectable that you just kind of, it's like make-believe, you're just there and you don't think about it too much. It wasn't until I was older that I started to kind of think a bit more. So I don't think it affects me as an actor. Um, I, don't, I found it hard. I mean, it was a long time ago, so I can't remember a lot of it. Um, they kept elements of the story from me, um, naturally, mm -hmm. to kind of preserve my innocence and naivety. Um, but I knew, obviously, I knew what happened, some of what had happened, and I, I, I knew about the Holocaust. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. It was, it was a massively impactful film on my career. Um, but it was, yeah, it was just a long time ago now. <laughs> it's, it's hard to kind of think about how, what, how that's, if there's still elements of that. Uh, that I think about, honestly, probably not. I was, I was so kind of young, and I mean that's fair. I don't remember anything from being nine either or ten. No. So yeah. that's fair. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, do we have another one? Hi. Hi. Um, my question was, how different was it filming season two from season one? Ooh, how different was it? It was. Uh, it was so good coming back for see it was thank god we got season two um and it was so good coming back i mean everybody's very close and we were literally returning to a school so it felt like we had been like the summer holiday yeah it felt like we had had summer holidays and we would all return back but um it was like it was it was it was very familiar it was very familiar but elements of it i i definitely felt were different yeah in this season we get to explore the individual characters a bit more, a bit more deeply. So there was less, uh, less ensemble stuff and more intimate kind of yeah. uh, things where everyone's kind of splintered off a bit, uh, which was cool because it meant I could, I, I could now watch things that I had had no ex sort of mm. no part in, and I could watch it fresh and mm. having no idea what what was what was going to happen or what to expect, mm. which is always great. Yeah, I think um, for us because I don't like watching myself, and the more time I can watch other people, yeah. the better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watching yourself is horrible. Um, I yeah, we, like you said, there were, it was a lot more individual um, this season. Like it's a lot more individual storylines, and so I didn't actually for like the first month we didn't f we, we didn't filmed like maybe two days, and it felt so weird. Mm. I didn't feel like I was filming Sex Education unless this one is beside me. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't feel like I was, and then like when, when, um, when Issa came back, I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> now I feel like I've got my superpowers back. Um, Aren't so yeah. they adorable? It's great. <laughs> I just love this friendship because I do love your character's friendship so much. I think it's, again, just so important for so many people to see and experience, as is the show and the themes you guys tackle and the way you tackle it with humor and levity, but you also walk away 
understanding yourself a little better and sort of maybe understanding people a little better. And I think that's like a really important quality in a show. So I'm obviously a huge fan of sex education. Thank, I know the audience you. is, and we cannot wait for season two, but we have to wait a little bit, guys, because sex education will return to Netflix with eight brand new episodes in 2020. So hold your breath, but not too long. Uh, put your hands together for Ethan Butterfield yeah. and Judy Gottfried. <laughs>